All right. What's up, everyone? This is Don with Third Creative, and this is the walkthrough tutorial video for the One Team Multi Sport Photoshop template. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain all of the layers, the features, as well as how to use them and customize them. Um, there's a lot of options, uh, but we'll be working with the 4x5 vertical file for most of this video. Um, just keep in mind that everything that we do with this file is going to apply to the other files as well. Um, but at the end of the video, we'll also touch on uh, a horizontal file, uh, also the memory mate file, a um, few tips on how to use this button file uh, here, and then we'll finish it up with uh, some tips on how you can use your own logo or image in this center circle um, if you want to do that. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Um, I always like to start from the bottom of the layer panel. Um, so this very first layer, uh, self-explanatory background color. Um, this is going to control, if I turn it off, you can see the area that it affects. So this is the color that you're going to uh, have back here. In this case, behind the net and some fog layers. Um, I'm going to be pretty thorough in this video, so I'll explain how to change the color. You'll click on this little square box here, which will bring up this color picker uh, panel. Um, where you can select any color, use this slider up and down, and find the color that works. Very simple. All right, we'll cancel out of that. Next, we have a folder which uh, includes or contains background options. So what it is referring to is, uh, for example, this net option. You can turn it off, turn it on. Um, there are three options that I have built in here. Um, you actually also have the option to not use any of them. Uh, I do have some fog layers above that you can see will affect this. Um, but the three options that you have are chain link. And you can actually um, scale this up a little bit if you want to. If you click on one of these anchors here and hold shift, and I hold shift and option on a Mac and it just scales it up. And you can scale it down a little bit if you want to. Um, you also have the option to add a color overlay. So in this case, if you turn it on here with this little eyeball, double click on the word color overlay, it'll bring this up. It's set to red, um, but it's the same concept. You can set it to any. Obviously, if you go really bright, it's really going to pop. Um, but if you're working with, say, a green, for example, you can come down and just put a little hint of green in there. And the same thing with the net option. Um, in in this case, you would also click on color overlay down here. I've got a gray, but if you hit red, you can see what happens. You probably want to keep it kind of on the darker side down here. Uh, but you have the option to change the color of the net if you would like to. Uh, the third option in here is just a concrete texture. Um, it is going to lighten the background color a little bit, but there is no color. Uh, to this layer or this option it is set to overlay so the color is still going to be affected or controlled by this very bottom layer as you can see the concrete texture will apply so if this lightens it up uh, more than you want to you can come down here and just go a little bit darker with it uh, okay those are the three background options we'll go back to the net and close this up all right, so we have background shape layers, and if we turn that off, you can see what it's referring to. So we've got all of these shapes. We've got this uh, circle that is behind the center circle. 
we've got all of these um, arches, the upper and the lower, the textures. So you'll see that clipped to it, we have a concrete texture, which you can turn off. It gives you kind of a smoother, like more of a matte look. Um, but that is an option. Um, it has a built-in drop shadow, which can be turned on and off. And of course, you can always do double click on drop shadow here and you can adjust it if you want to. We've got distance, size, and opacity, and color, etc. Um, but let's open it up and take a look here. We've got some things going on inside here. Um, I'm going to come all the way to the bottom. Um, this shape layers that we have here, this is going to be uh, the ones that you see that are in gold. So this is uh, definitely one of the, the spots you want to come to. Um, I consider this the accent color. Um, if you want to change the color, it's the same concept. You have a color overlay right here. Just double click it. And this one you can you pretty much get away with anything as far as a color. You can go really dark. You can go really light. One thing I will say is if you go real if you go to solid white, you will lose a lot of the texture in the overlay. Um, so if you come down just a little bit, you'll start to see that diamond pattern come back a little bit. Um, let's see. We have a diamond pattern texture that is clipped, which can be turned off if you don't want that diamond pattern. Um, next we have uh, accent lines. No need to open these um, folders up. You'll just work with the uh, the adjustments that are on the folders themselves. So we have accent line here and what this is referring to is this thin stroke outline that you see up here at the top and also here at the bottom. If you double click on the word stroke you can change the size. You can increase it if you want it really big. I don't think you'd want to do that. You can make it thinner um, I'm going to cancel, get back where we were, go back in. You'll control the color right here in this box. So it's the same concept or process. Very easy. The next folder that we have is the upper and lower foreground shapes. So if I turn that off, you'll see what it's referring to. So we've got this upper shape here, and we've got the same on the lower. Um, it's got your bevel and boss, your drop shadow that's already built in, but you're going to use this if you want to change the colors. Um, I will say it's my opinion this template works best with darker colors. Um, when I try to do anything with really light colors, um, you lose a lot of detail. Um, just didn't seem to look as good, um, but it's the same thing here. Um, I like it with a darker color uh, on these foreground shapes and a lighter color, accent color on these uh, shapes that are behind it, personally. Um, but all of that's very, very simple, very easy. It's all contained in this background shapes layer, which you can turn off. You see your concrete texture that is clipped to this layer. Next, we have your upper text layer. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, I have them labeled as year, team name, sport name. Uh, these can be anything you want them to be. That's just how I use them. Um, all of this can be actually down here below and the name could be up top. You know, you can do that however you want to. Um, but this is very, very easy, very simple. Um, we have your year, which it's a text layer. So when you're dealing with text, um, if you have your character panel displayed like I do, you can just use this color box here to uh, change the color. Um, however, if you don't have your character panel and you just double click on the T here, up top you'll see this box, which you can do the same thing. Um, let's see, same thing applies with the team name. Um, it has an inner shadow. It has a stroke built in, which is turned off for this, but if you turn it on, you can see that you know, it's an option that's there if you want to use it. If you want to edit it, you just click on the word stroke. This will change the color, this little box here. Um, and then, of course, you can use the size slider to make it smaller, bigger. It is set to center. You can go inside. You can go outside. It'll all give you different looks. Um, 
We'll leave that at center and we'll actually turn it off. And then of course we have a sport name that's the same thing. Um, character panel here or double click on the T and come here. So one thing we want to touch on um, is that Lady Raiders and Volleyball and 22, this all fits and is arranged well where it works. But depending on you know what it says, what you need it to say, it may not fill the space the same. So there's a few options. One is you can use any font you want. And on your PDF file, you'll see links for all of the fonts that I chose to use in all of the sample images that you'll see on the product page and the website. Um, so, you know, it's wide open. You know, and there's a ton of sources for commercial free fonts. So that's one option. You might want, if you have um, a really long name, you probably want to pick a font that is kind of long and tall, similar to this. More narrow, more tall. That way you can fit more in, you know, a smaller space. If you have a, a smaller name or word that you have and you want it to take up more space, you probably want to find a, a wider font, something that takes up a little more space. Keep in mind that you also have options, specifically say with the sport name or the year or really anything, you have options to control how much space it takes up by using your character panel. You have the kerneling option, which is this right here. You can click and drag to the right and to the left. And we got way off center here, but uh, we'll fix that. Well, I guess we need to, uh, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Let's just back up. What did I do? Okay. There you go. You get the idea. And you can come back and make it tighter. So you have options there. We will back up. Um, so that will come in handy, say, with um, the sport name. You know, if it's golf, let's just, I mean, let's just type that in. You're not going to be able to see that. So if you expand your kerneling here, you can get more visible, get the letters to be more visible. Now, when you use the kerneling, it's, it's going to not keep it centered a little bit. But that's okay. So let's say I'm going to keep... Eh, let's find a sweet spot right here. Okay, there's a few ways you can center it. But one way is to just go to select all. Make sure you have this um, text layer selected. Um, now up here, using this, it will center it horizontally on your canvas. So um, something to keep in mind that might help. Uh, let's see, let's back up. Let's get back where we had it. How long will that take? A little bit. There we go. Okay. So that's pretty much it for the text layers. It does have this diamond powder texture um, clip to it. So you can turn that off if you want it to look a, a little smoother. Um, one thing is if you move this folder, say, up because you want it you know, to appear down here, make sure you move this diamond pattern with it and keep it clipped to this folder um, otherwise it can do some weird things um, this diamond pattern can be scaled up or down if you want the diamond pattern to be larger or smaller uh, let's see next we have our center circle layers yeah there's quite a bit to go over in here so let's take a look at this um, first folder that we have is your circle lights. So if I turn that off, you can see the lights go away. Um, it has a color overlay. I think white looks the best to me, but you do have the option, and I made, I think, at least one example to add color. Um, if you go dark, it doesn't really look too good. And if you go low saturation it doesn't really look too good unless it's at white I think these two corners personally work the best keep it super bright and either 
completely desaturated or full saturation. But you can, you can really do a lot with that. Let's cancel that and get out. Inside this folder, there is another option um, for the center, which is a large center circle light. So if you turn that on, you can see. Um, I think I made an example with cheerleading for that. So that's in there. You can change the color of it. However, keep in mind that um, if you want it to be different than the circle lights, you'll need to turn off the the color overlay that is on the folder here. And now you can control these independently with the color overlay. And let's see here, color overlay here, color overlay here. If you want them to be the same, you just keep it on and just use this one and they will match. So let's keep going. We've got this highlight and you can barely see the difference, but it kind of adds a little bit of light at the top, adds a light fall off effect. We also have our concrete texture that's clipped. So if you zoom in, you can kind of see in here that there's a concrete texture. Uh, let's see, inner circle options. So before I get too much into that, let's turn off a few things so that we can see what we're working with. Let's turn off this center light here. Okay, so you have a text option, um, which if I turn that on, you can see. So the thing to keep in mind that it, anything that's in this circle is likely to be mostly covered up by your subject image. So you have to work around that. But if there is any um, text, it could be their jersey numbers, it could be just, um, you know, the the first, um, in this case I have LRV, so Lady Raider Volleyball. Um, anything you want in there, if it's just one single character or letter, um, that option is built in. Um, let's see. We have inner circle uh, options here. It says change color. You do have the option to, um, to change the colors on these. You would do it from the folder level right here. So this is really simple. You just make sure that you only have the one that you want to use turned on out of all of these. We'll work our way through them. Kind of a general all-purpose, I have this ring in here. Um, I have a solid circle. I have uh, this as a basketball option, but I have a second back, excuse me, second basketball option in here. Um, we have our soccer ball, we have our volleyball, we have our softball, baseball, and I have uh, the yin and the yang for martial arts. So if you want to change the color to any of these, we'll just double click on color overlay, same thing, come to the box. Uh, again, I think darker usually works better and if, if the color you, uh, you're you working with with their uniform just doesn't look good, then you can always just keep it the darker color here. Uh, let's see. The last layer in this folder is the background circle. So if I turn that off, it's the the portion that's behind the you know the the ball and the lights, kind of like a background circle. Same concept. You can change uh, with a color overlay here, so you can have different colors. Very simple, very easy. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's close that up. What else do we have here? Center circle layers. Okay, so now we have uh, background fog. So I have three different background or three different fog layers, and I can kind of talk on all three at once. Um, this one is only set to 20% opacity. So if I turn it off, you can see it it darkens it up, but you lose you know some of that atmosphere, some of that drama. So if you want a little less, you can. Bring the opacity down. If you want more, you can bring the opacity. I don't know if you'd want it all the way up. That's that's a little extra, but it is um, set to 20%. You do have the option to change the color. So if you wanted, say, like kind of a reddish fog, you could do that. Um, and the same thing applies with the others, which you'll see they're they're all in blue here. We have lower fog. 
which you can turn off and on. Same thing, you can adjust the opacity. And we have more lower fog. I think this one is turned off by default, but if you want even more, you can add that. And again, play with the color and the opacity. Those are pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, we have your subject image. You're gonna place all of your subject images within this folder scale and position them. It has a built-in drop shadow which can be turned off and turned on. If you look below our elbow you can see how that's that's showing up there. Um, okay next we have a lower foreground color, leg color. So I added this rather than having a layer mask a gradient mask on the subject folder that fades it out where you start to see everything that's behind it um, I added this, and so the idea is to keep it um, similar to the color that you have for these, what we have a, like a dark gray here and a dark gray here, and what that will do is it will create a transition so that their legs fade out into this background color. So you can see if I change this to something drastically different, you can see what it's doing there. So you can go light, you know, kind of with the fog look, you can keep it dark like I had it. You can do a dark color. Uh, maybe we want to do something similar to this gold. Play around with it, see what looks good to you. Um, if you, this is a good time to talk about the transition or the gradient. If you want this to look different, as in how how long the transition lasts. You can manipulate that. This is your uh, layer mask, your gradient mask. So if you select this and use your gradient tool, which looks like this, make sure you have black, my gradients are a mess here. Make sure you're working with black to white. So we have black to white here. Just find that gradient, make sure you're working with it. And what I do is I click on at the point where I want my transition to start and I hold shift to keep a straight line and this may be backwards let's see yeah it is so I'm gonna start I'm gonna click where I want it to end so if we want this higher hold down shift click drag down to the point where I want it to to be the uh, least transparent so you can see I'm just repeating this and you can make it however gradual and obviously this is extra what I'm doing but just trying to give you the idea of how that works so let's go all the way back hopefully that made sense next we have some vignetting two layers we've got one that's levels turn it off you can see it really lightens the corners so maybe you don't want the corners so dark you turn off the uh, exposure vignette uh, it really lightens it up. So uh, a few things you can do here. You can actually double click and you can change the exposure. Maybe you want it there, but just not as dark. You can bring it up. Maybe you want it, you know, even darker. Um, let's get back to the original. There we go. And the same thing with the the levels. If you double click here, you can you can make it darker. You can make it lighter. And you can also even, if you were to use your select or move tool, you can even, like I'm gonna hold down shift and option and I'm gonna just make it out wider so it, it only hits the corners. So if you don't like the way that I have it set up by default, those are just some quick things that you can do to adjust it. So last, well almost last, we have our lower text layers, very simple. Uh, let's see open this up so at the bottom I have subtext so this can be anything you want it to be and you can even turn it off if you need to um, but this subtext I have her classification junior you can do freshman sophomore senior etc you can do their position it can be really anything it could be the year um, we have player name now I have it set um, for cosmetic purposes I've got it two different colors because I thought that looked good uh, bring out some of the white that we see in the uniform and the whites and then go with some of the accent color. Now, for automation purposes, this becomes 
pretty tricky. So if you're using some automation, you're probably going to need to go with a solid color. Um, if you are doing this uh, manually, here's how you will do it. If you double click on the, the T in the text layer box to get everything highlighted, uh, this will activate your text tool. And what I do is I'll click and drag to highlight just the first name. And so I'll put my name in here. It'll be Don. Actually, I should have changed the color first. So click and drag to highlight it. Now come up here and select the color that you want. And then you can hit OK. Now you can come and click and drag on the last name. Now you can select the color that you want and hit OK. Once you have it, hit the check mark, and that's how you will uh, have two different colors on one text layer. Um, again, you can use any font. You can play with the size. You can play with the spacing. Um, next, we have a dark and lower text. So this was uh, the way that I made it fade into a little bit of a darker color without using an actual gradient. I thought this might be easier. You can turn it off. You can see the effect that it gets. Um, pretty simple. And let's see, two more layers. Uh, these are very optional. Um, when I created this for my daughter's uh, volleyball team, um, I added this, uh, this filter, which is a warm contrast. So you can see if I turn it off and turn it on. It just gives it a nice, warm vibrance. Now, I added a cool contrast. It's, it does add a cool effect, but it is not as punchy as the warm one. Um, but the opacity is set at 10% on this one. And, well, it's set at 10% on both. So you can increase it. Now, obviously, that's way too much, but you can play with that. If you want to less, you can go down to 5. Uh, but you get the idea. <clears throat> And that is it. That is all the layers. So a few more things to cover. Um, I'm going to go over a few things that apply to the horizontal, the memory mate, the button, and then we'll finish up uh, with a little demonstration on how to use your own logo or uh, image in the center circle. So let's jump over to the horizontal file. Five horizontal file pulled up. This is the file that you would most likely be using for most of your team images. Um, everything really is exactly the same with the exception of maybe this team subject image folder. Um, it will come with this sample team image here. Um, the main thing that I want to touch on here or the thing that people seem to run into is this transition um, for the legs. So there's two things that I have here that are affecting that transition. Um, one is this layer mask that is on the folder, um, which I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click there. It's going to turn it off. Now you can see it exposed more of the legs. Um, if I zoom in here, you can see like I didn't cut out the floor that they were standing on and that starts to show. Um, the other is this, it's the same thing that I had in the, um, the vertical individual file is this, um, this color uh, layer with a gradient mask and this is a lower foreground color slash leg cover if I turn that off you can see now we've lost everything so you can use one or the other or both of these however you want to um, but as I demonstrated and I'll quickly demonstrate again um, if it's if this default gradient mask isn't working for your team images let's say you need more leg to show or you need less leg to show um, it's very simple so let's let's just work with um, let's turn that off and let's work with just this layer mask that's on this folder um, so with your layer mask and it doesn't matter if you're working with this one or this one just make sure that the layer mask is selected and again we we'll want to go to our gradient tool looks like this and we want to make sure we're working with black to white or white to black, one or the other. And it's the same thing. Um, since I'm working with black to white, just keep in mind black conceals, white reveals. So if I start here at full black, that's going to be completely uh, visible, um, zero opacity. And wherever I end, 
will be the white part of the gradient, which will show. Um, so actually, you, that's a good point. You can see it's the opposite. In this case, that's a mask over your subjects. So I would start with black where I don't want your subjects to show, drag up to white where I do want them to show. So I'll do it just a random where you can see. So that's a much more gradual transition. You can do a much shorter transition. But just keep in mind, every time you do this, it just replaces what you had before. So if I undo, 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 we get back to where I was at. So now, let's look at it with, let's turn that off. Let's look at it with this color, uh, foreground color, leg cover. So it'll be the opposite. We'll uh, select our layer mask. And since we have black to white, black is going to conceal, so I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So we can add more, uh, more of a gradual cover if I start higher and come down here. It actually exposes more because I came down, but let's say if I stop here, you can see. And these may not all be what you would actually do, but this is just to demonstrate the concept, the idea, the purpose. So you can just play around with it until you get it how you like it. You know, so if you do something with this text and you don't have all this space and you want to bring them very lower, then you can come down here and you can expose, you know, much more. Um, but that's the main thing I think some of you might run into if you um, if you're not experienced with that, uh, at least that as of yet. Hopefully that will help you out. So the next thing is to jump over to the Memory Mate and show you how you will use this 4x5 team image to create your Memory Mate. So let's jump over to that. All right, so now we have our Memory Mate image or file pulled up here. Um, just a few quick things to touch on. Um, one, same thing that I just went over applies to our subject image here. We have this lower foreground leg cover. I've got it set to what I think most likely would uh, work best for most situations. But the same thing, use your gradient tool to adjust this if you need to. The only other thing, and if you have used any of my uh, recent Memory Mate template files, you're probably already familiar with this. But we have, um, we have a folder here for your subject. So this is your primary subject. Uh, you will place it within this folder, scale and position it how you want it. Um, and the folder below it is a place to insert your 4x5 team image. So the file that we were just working with, the team image, um, let's say this is the, the default sample image. Let's just get rid of that. So now you don't have your memory made in image in here. But you would start by creating your team image, and let's say you have it saved as a JPEG. You would go pull up your, uh, your windows here, and all you have to do is click and drag and drop. Now it's going to cover the entire canvas, which is okay. Um, you can either scale it down now, or you can hit the check mark and come back to it. But let's go ahead and scale it down now. I'm going to click on this anchor point and drag it down. All right, let's try that. Now I'm going to click in here and just drag it up into position where I think it might look good. Now, once you have it how you like it, hit the check mark and commit. The only thing is, it didn't go in this folder, even though I had this folder selected. So all we have to do is select it in our layer panel, click and drag until the, uh, the layer folder is highlighted like this, let go, and now it is inside the folder. And all that's gonna do is add this drop shadow. You can see if I turn it off, just a little more dimension. You may or may not want it, um, but that is how you will create your memory mate, everything else is the same as far as your text layers and your colors and all of that. So we've already covered all of that. The next thing to cover real quick is a few uh, quick tips on the button file. So let's jump over to that real quick. 
Okay, so I have the button file pulled up, and this is something else. If you've purchased any of my recent templates and used the button file or watched the videos, you're already familiar with this, but uh, it has a built-in bleed guide, and it is turned on when you open the file, and that's why you're going to see these circle areas. Um, the darker outer edge is basically anything that you are absolutely not going to see on your button if you use this one by one file for buttons. This lighter gray area is going to be what is at risk. Obviously the further towards the dark, the more likely you're not going to see it. But this is the portion that will wrap around the edge of the button and likely be lost. This uh, inner circle represents your safe area. Um, so just make sure that anything and everything that you want to be visible um, consider this non-affected circle area in the center to be the face of your button and what you want to show. Um, you probably still want to keep anything super important away from this edge right here. Um, but this is how I have it set up. I have it set up without any text showing or anything like that. Um, and the reason I did that is because a button is a small, usually a pretty small area. I guess you can get some pretty large buttons, but the more you jumble it up with text and all those graphics and everything else, I think the, the more uh, busy it gets and the less uh, it features the athlete that you're trying to feature. So that's why I have it set up this way. Um, but before I get too far, just make sure that once you create your image, you turn this bleed guide off. And now you can save this as a JPEG and use it for uh, your button purchases and it should line up right for you. Um, everything else, this is the same. I do have the text layers in here. You can turn them on and you can maybe create, if you want to create um, like a square image. Um, I know Instagram used to be square images only, but um, if you have any purpose or reason for a completely square image, social media or what have you, um, you can do that. Everything else in here um, is the same as the other files. So we've already covered all of that. And that's, that's pretty much it for the button file. The only uh, other thing that I wanted to touch on um, was the option to use your own image in the center circle. So I'm going to get a, a vertical pulled back up and we'll uh, take a look at that and uh, that should wrap it up. Okay, so now we've got our 4x5 vertical uh, open again. Uh, what we're going to want to do is go to the subject image folder, turn that off, that way we can see what we're working with. And we're going to be working with the center circle layers folder. Now, right now I have volleyball turned on, so we'll turn that off, and then we've got a blank slate on uh, what we want to add here. So, a um, few things to keep in mind. If you're going to add your own image, um, not every image is going to work. Um, so, you'll see all of these options. They're just single color, almost clip art, or pretty much clip art single solid color. So if you have a lot of detail, thin lines, varied colors, different things like that, it's not going to work the way that these work. Now there may be a way to still use it and I can touch on that as well. Um, but for example, uh, this is a great image to use because it's almost a circular shape. You can fill up a lot of the space, but it is very bold, prominent, black, with a white background. Um, here is another image that probably wouldn't be good to use. Um, it still could be used possibly and I'll, uh, I'll kind of cover that but let's start off with this one and what we would do if you have an image that is a solid color um, hopefully you have a PNG already without the background but if you don't it's not a big deal if you have it open in Photoshop we'll want to there's a few different ways um, you can use your select or excuse me, quick selection tool that you see here. And uh, with the layer selected, we'll come up here to select subject and we'll just click on it. So that did a, an absolutely terrible job. So um, you can click this drop down menu and you can switch to cloud, cloud based and hit select subject again. You wanna continue. 
And so it did a better job, but it's still not as good. Um, now you could go in and manually clean this up. Hopefully um, this will work better for whatever image that you have selected for whatever reason this one is not. So let's get rid of that by hitting deselect and I'll show you one other method uh, from the select menu. Come to color range. Um, I'm going to move the fuzziness all the way down to zero. Let's see. I'm going to click on the outside here and you can kind of see um, the mass that we have selected here. And if I collect, if I click in here where the paw would be, now you can see. So you'll just want to click in an area where it picks up the, the color of the logo or the image that you're wanting to use. And this is going to represent your mask. It's going to keep the white, it's going to get rid of the black area. And you can play with the fuzziness and you can kind of see a preview in here if it gets choppy or smoother just find something that works once you have this looking good and you hit OK it's going to create a selection so with your marching ants around your selection as long as it looks good you'll come down here and click on this little icon to add a layer mask and it's going to uh, get rid of your background and so now you just have your logo with transparent background um, if for some reason um, it masks out your logo and keeps the background, which um, depending on how you did your selection sometimes might happen. Um, you can always uh, invert this. So I do it uh, command, I guess it would be con control on a PC I believe, but uh, command I will invert your mask. So keep that in mind if it is backwards. But now what we'll do is we'll just click and drag and drop uh, over here into this file. So it didn't land where it needs to land. I see it retained a little bit of white on the edge, but that's going to be okay. Um, what I would do uh, first is right click on this layer and convert it to a smart object. That way, when you're scaling it up and down and trying to position it just right, it doesn't lose quality. Um, or get pixelated. So now that we have it as a smart object, now I'm going to click and drag it down into this folder, this inner circle options folder. Now it's not looking right because I still have basketball turned on. Let's turn off basketball and now you can see that you have it in there. So now we just need to go to our uh, move tool and select one of these anchor points and we want to scale it and position it just like that. And so that's a quick run through on how you would use your own image, extract it if you need to. Um, but let's take another look at this one. So let's say you have a complicated image here that's not you know, as simple and straightforward. There's a few options that you might have. So one thing I'll do is I'm gonna go back to select and I'm gonna look at color range again. Ah, it already it already went to it. Okay, so now you can click around at the different colors and you can pick up and see what your mask might look like. So in this case, it's going to retain all of that. So now you lose some of the detail, but does that still work? If it does, roll with it. If it doesn't, what we can do is the uh, select subject option again. It looks like I have a pretty good selection here, so I'm just going to roll with that. We'll add the layer mask down here. So now we've got a layer mask. Uh, let's go ahead and make it a smart object now. Now we can drag it over and drop it. Okay, so now we don't have any of the detail. That doesn't look good. Um, so we want to move this out of this folder, just above, just like so. So now um, you can see all of de the detail. So with your move tool, we'll go ahead and click on an anchor point, scale it up. A little too big. And this may not even be the best logo to use because your subject may cover it up. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, once you have it how you like, I hit the check mark. So if you like the way that looks, use it. But you could also play with blend modes. Um, we can go to overlay, and we can go to soft light, I think are two that would work good. 
um, let's try soft light. You can play with the opacity, you can make it very subtle. Uh, one thing I might suggest, since it's a smart object, we can go to image and adjustment and go to hue slash saturation. Um, on a Mac, it's command U. Pull up this hue slash saturation and let's desaturate it and hit OK. So now you have your logo with the detail um, without losing the detail and it lets some of the uh, concrete texture show through. You can scale and position it. If you don't like the desaturated, you can just come over here and turn it off or you can you can open it up and bring the saturation back up. One more option is to hit this colorize and you get a solid color and you can play with the saturation, the lightness and the darkness. So a lot of options there. Um, I ran through that very quickly. So maybe if you missed anything or didn't grasp everything, watch it again. And, and if you're still having any trouble with it, you can always shoot me a message. But that is it. Hopefully I've covered everything. Uh, I'm sure I didn't, but um, at least hopefully you have a good grasp of how to use the template, how to get the most out of it, and most importantly, hopefully make some money with it. Um, so that's all I have for this one. It's on to the next. Um, I appreciate all of you. Until next time, we'll see you.